Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. You got myself, Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. What's up, man? What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to show 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is the show where we combined 3D printing, DIY electronics, to smash them together to make inspirational projects for you folks. It's uh, the end of the year, Pedro. That's right. We're approaching 2016. We look back at some of the awesome projects we've worked on. I think the theme here is that we've done a lot of Raspberry Pi, a lot of Prop making, cosplay, cosplay, and uh, lots of stuff, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, upcoming 49 weeks of the 3D Hangout show. Upcoming for 2016, it looks like we're gonna ha uh, be testing better versions of bigger printers, smaller, littler ones. Small printers, big printers, filaments, more materials. Always a thing going on. A lot here. of Bluetooth. A lot of new boards coming out. Very awesomeness as we approach 2016. That's right. Um, so let's sh let's tell the folks uh, what we do here at the show. That's right. Every week we this. have a lovely assortment of segments. We start off with what are you prototyping? That's so right. Then we take a look at some of the projects we're working on for future episodes. Future, future. Layer by layer. Layer by layer is when we take a look at some of the CAD techniques that we use in designing our projects. Shop and talk to. Shop and talk is some of the behind the scenes and some of the ongoings in the studio. We'll do a Q&A. Q&A, remember if you have any questions, leave them in any of the videos and we will gather them up for a future episode. And Community Makes. Community Makes is when we spotlight awesome maker in the community making. Community making, that's <laughs> right. Well, let's start off and pay some bills, Pedro. How about a coupon code for the folks? That's right, remember every week you get an awesome discount code from us. This week's code is Hovercam. Gets you 10% off your entire order and you get any printers, filament, and of course the awesome breakout boards that you manufacture here in New York, That's US. Right. We got some freebies for you folks as well. There's still stuff going on as, as the supplies are still limited, but we're still doing this. That's right, it's gonna be um, $100, orders over $100, <laughs> and you get free half-size promo proto, $150 or more, you get a trinket five volt, $200 or more gets you free shipping, and $250 gets you uh, everything plus a Pro Trinket 5 volt automatically added to your order. You can even take it out if you don't That's want it. That's right. Folks, it's December 17th, so that means uh, we got a week left for the Christmas holiday here in the States. That's right. If you procrastinate it, you're going to have to pay for the overnight shipping, or the two day shipping to get it mm -hmm. in time. So if you must have it and just forgot, or if it was out of stock, um, get them a gift certificate. It's probably the best way to get That's right. your, you know, electronics geek in your life. Okay. Get them that present that you want. Get them a gift card. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and jump into what are you prototyping? This week it's a little bit different. This week uh, we're prototyping an update to this week's project, um, but we kind of we it's kind of the same update. Thing. Yeah, so it's a design <laughs> Tell me for about this project, a Pedro. GoPro mount for your hoverboard. Hoverboard? What's a hoverboard? Show yeah, so the folks what this, a hoverboard is. It's this year's hottest gift item. It's that two-wheel little hoverboard, yeah, you know, it's whatever everybody calls a it. self-balancing smart Segway scooter. Yeah, Segway so there's Segway. no easy way to actually mount a camera to that. Um, one of the uh, one first of the places we that we saw thing, it yeah. was uh, in filmmaking. One of the guys over at uh, the guys over at Di uh, Corridor Digital mm -hmm. was using this on one of the viral videos that came out this year. Yeah, for it's called Real GTA. You might, you might have seen it on YouTube. Yeah, uh, it looks like they're it's such a smooth. It almost looks like a drone footage. Like, how do they do that? Well, they used a, a, a GoPro with a gimbal in uh, the Actually, monorover. Actually, that's uh, on the recommendation of that is how. That's the very one they're using. Yeah, this is why we got the gimbal and stuff. But okay. you could also get low angle action shots while on the um, the hoverboard or mon monorover, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Let's show them. the hoverboard. Yeah, we so showed this on the show when we first got it, and we were saying, hey, you know, we would love to do some cool uh, camera stuff with it. Well, folks, we finally did it. Yeah, this so it's, it. it'd be a little bit difficult to attach, like, say, one of the sticky um, mounts that come with your hoverboard yeah. or your have GoPro. Okay. Yeah, you can't really put it on the middle there because <laughs> the little middle part there actually twists. Um, to to uh, turn left or right. Exactly, yeah. So there's no really easy way to have one of those mounts. And of course, you can't just drill through yeah, these because that's where your foot is going to go on there. And of course, you could hit like a wire or a battery. So how did you explode. figure this out? Yeah, so it's a simple uh, little clip that goes on the middle here. Yeah. Just simply just snaps on thing? like that. Don't forget the most important part, folks. Yeah, so that just clips on there like that. And the thing that's actually making it work, of course, what you're showing there is the 
Ninja Flex, a little inner core there. Good thing that's PHA, PLA. Yeah, so <laughs> what you're going to need is the um, the regular Ninja Flex. This is not going to work with Semi Flex or TP, PC TPE because it does have more slippery properties. The that's regular Ninja Flex all, yeah. has the rubbery, grippy it's properties. It's a good friction, a good grip to your hoverboard. Yeah, exactly. So you just uh, put that on there like that. And then you use the little two, um, the two hooks, little two hooks there, and just slide that into place like that. It's a really tight fit. Um, when we first tried it out, I was a little bit doubtful because I wasn't sure that you would be able to do that. I thought it would obstruct writing, but it's actually very, very, very slight friction when you're writing. You can't even really feel it. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't obstruct the camera, which mm -hmm. is which is amazing. So this this week's project video uh, shows um, just really quick how it works and. Of course, footage from the actual GoPro. Uh, so we have two different GoPros here that we were testing out. We're using the uh, the GoPro Session, which is this nice, small, lightweight form factor, and the Hero what three? This is the Hero three black. It's about the same size as the Hero four okay. or the Hero four silver. So this is a a, a standard uh, mount for the GoPro accessory. So it has those three little things, um, and. Um, yeah, it just mounts it, on there. It prints easily. with supports, right? You need a little bit of support material. Minimal supports, yeah. Okay. Easy to take so off. So I, I designed this part where I was like, you know, let's go ahead and make a version where we have a D-ring so that we can add a cold shoe adapter along with the swivel head. Uh, and then these things here, because you can actually put this on whatever type of camera, pocket size action camera um, that's lightweight. So that's, that's all this piece is. And then this is actually a piece that uh, you have to get separately with your GoPro kit. I think they're... There's some DIY easy to get. solutions that you can make it make out of the packaging that comes with your GoPro. Okay, that's awesome. And this is this already swivels a little bit, so you do have a little bit of uh, yeah, you're able to adjust uh, this adjustment down, there. Yeah. But this one uh, gives you more uh, freedom, degrees of freedom, and you can uh, I guess make it sideways if you wanted to do something. Yeah, crazy if you like wanted that. to like aim it that way, you know, to the left or right, you're able to swivel that around using that okay. design there. Another thing I thought that would uh, would be kind of a caution thing is that your feet would get in the shot because of it's uh, such a wide mm -hmm. angle. So how how do we avoid that? Yeah, so you just <laughs> uh, frame up your shot and make sure that your feet aren't, you know, completely hanging off the end like that. So Could you use a, a little bit more maybe a back. smartwatch or your mobile phone? Oh, yeah, that's right. The uh, GoPro um, app for mm -hmm. your uh, Apple Watch just recently got updated. came out this week. I think I showed it off on my Instagram. Or if you have Let's an Android device, out. you can just use that, and then you can kind of get exactly. a bigger screen. Yeah. So that works as well. Um, so that's this week's project that we were prototyping. Um, it's a pretty cool little, uh, little GoPro mount. So of course, it'll work with other stuff, especially with this one. Um, yeah, so. so the thing that we figured out though is the weight on the something like the Hero. Um, it's kind of heavy. Yeah, this is a little bit more heavier, so you want to use something like this design here, or a smaller camera like the right. Hero Four Session, or any anything that has like the cube, the smaller cube mm -hmm. the design. I think like the Polaroid cube would also work on this. We tested this indoors on our hardwood tile, and there was very minimal. There was almost no shake. Mm -hmm. Um, but as soon as we got this outside, it was a little bit, maybe the thing wasn't tightened all the way. As soon as we tried this one out, there was almost no Absolutely shake no at shake, all. Yeah. The Ninja Flex app um, adds a lot of cushioning Absorption, and absorbs yeah. a lot of the shake, especially right. if you're like on gravel mm -hmm. or uneven sidewalks. You definitely want to use this design. And of course, to completely eliminate um, any excessive shake, you want to use a smaller body uh, GoPro. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump into sh uh, the Lair Belair. Uh, segment, and then we'll talk more about some actual comparison shots of using um, using warp stabilizer and uh, some things to look out for when you're using the yeah, gimbal. So there's a lot of different models of the hoverboards, and That's the right. radius might be not be That's right, the yeah. same for everyone. So um, I started off the design using um, it wasn't completely editable. The once you updated the radius, the little clips here would. Um, in the design would break, so you did it. Uh, yeah, I did everything sketch driven. Yeah. So let's go ahead and jump okay. into the layer by layer. Let's though. do that layer by layer. Uh, it's uploaded this week, folks. It's a nice ten-minute uh, uh, episode to but see the distances sort of between quick, something. Or you could so do I a sketch the line tool. So it I is. It is make one a nice distance, uh, and that's what I wanted. I wanted a one millimeter distance. Uh, so. Sketch out things and use so it is like point uh, the one grid here. as a reference point. So and, each little uh, uh, grid and you can see that uh, the, the grid has a little bit so of a that 
thicker uh, line a visual for .5 millimeters, so you can use that. Wanted, uh, and then you could just the reference. Is the hook um, rather to be one millimeter. You can just reference this. So, so I'm just going to draw this out. Instead of like clicking and, and dragging it, uh, line, how you I want think things it should to snap be. to the grid. So you can one, just click it's like on one millimeter uh, across this whole thing, right? And everything so uh, gets make this like uh, that. And you can use whatever point you want. So that's really easy. Uh, and that's to, pretty much it. And then from there, I do a little bit if I wanted to, let's tutorial, say I wanted to get this whole thing, let me close it off. That's pretty much how I made it, it and uh, it's actually printed all in one, all in one piece. And I, so I, I wanted to find like out the midpoint. You've seen me do this quite a bit before. So it's like then this. Two, then three, and then finally point five millimeters, Click which gives here. it a good wiggle room for most three D printers. So and then uh, it's a really quick one, uh, but very useful line. one if you're still so getting no longer used to uh, drawing sketches. And then let's say I wanted tool. to like move this so to the center. It on that one. Uh, it's completely I can just make another construction line on the center, depending on the thickness of your motherboard. And of course, it is a two piece design. on that, and then I'll lock this in so that it doesn't. Move. Otherwise, so if I don't lock that, clip, yes, um, it'll, gonna need uh, the it'll move flex, this to that. Um, inner yeah. core so like now I can uh, yeah. I so. do a All right, collinear well, that's, that's where it I say I want that. Left, folks. Let's go ahead and do the shop talk next. This is where we're going to talk about uh, sort of getting some things that we learned while actually getting and using the hoverboard as a, as a hover cam. <laughs> So uh, this is a really cool shot that we got, but take a look at the side, the corner up there in your page's head. You can see that I actually ended up getting uh, the gimbal itself. So tell us, how, do, how should we use the gimbal uh, when you're recording? Yeah, so one of the things you want to avoid when getting, that, if you're getting shots of it on the hoverboard, is you want to make sure that it's completely leveled like that. You don't want to go all the way down like that. That's like where you did. it's too far, yeah. Yeah, that's where it starts and, getting in the way of the, the view there. In my defense, <laughs> even though this thing doesn't cover the lens, uh, I didn't know that, and because it's like you said, it's so wide, you can, you see it. So yeah. that's how you so want to operate this thing. It'll be out of the view there, but if you go down like that, you start you will seeing get it. it. Yeah. yeah. So that's a little tip there. And this is such a cool shot, and it's very unfortunate because we got a couple other shots that were this cool. It really showcases uh, just sort of how it looks like uh, when you're when you're when you're uh, writing it. I guess I'm on the skateboard, by the way, my electric skateboard, and. You can get nice shots with that as well, but it's not maneuver. It's not as as nimble and maneuverable. Yeah. And you can see there too that my feet, um, w when you're using the bigger design there, you don't have to have your feet completely all the way back. Yeah. You can have more more forward. Um, so that's when you want to use that. The, okay. The design with the swivel mini ball head. Zoom. Next up, let's look at some comparison shots of using warp stabilizer versus non warp stabilizer. So tell me real quick, what is warp stabilizer? So warp stabilizer is a. It's just like a stabilizer post processing technique that you can use inside of Premiere. Adobe Premiere. Yeah. Um, Final, Final Cut has it. In. Yeah. Final Cut has something like that as well. Yeah. And if you can show the footage here, sure, you can just see look. using the the other design with the GoPro session. You can see the raw footage on the right. It's not that bad at it's all. Not that bad at all. Yeah. yeah it's th just a little uh, bumps here and there when you run over like some gravel. It's definitely here. noticeable here. Yeah. When you're going over the wood on the the deck here. But if you look over at the warp stabilizer, um, it completely piece. smooths everything out. Yeah, it almost looked like we had a f uh, drone flying through there. Mm -hmm. And very minimal for the smooth on the, the options for that. I think yeah. it's like 10% uh, instead of the 50% that is default when you apply the effect. So okay. very minimal amount of uh, post-processing for that, but you get an incredibly smooth um, effect in a, when you're doing your edit. Yeah. And These are awesome shots. Like this is exactly what we wanted to do when we got the hoverboard. Mm -hmm. This is this is exactly what we wanted to do. <laughs> so, uh, any other cool tips that that uh, we noticed? Uh, Other than using a small camera, using making small sure camera. everything is really tight. Mm -hmm. I would I would say review your shots and 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 try out a different um, try out the different designs. Right, one with uh, your design, one with my design, mm -hmm. just to see yeah. for yourself how how much of a difference it really is. Yeah. Um, what we shot indoors. Using this indoors, setup here so with the nice, bigger yeah. body, we yeah. did get really smooth shots, which right. we, you know, which is why we didn't notice until we reviewed our shots when we were on location. Yeah. So uh, if you're you're not sure if it, if the sidewalk that you're going to be filming on is completely level or not, uh, just use a smaller body right. to ensure that you get you know the smoothest possible right. images you can. Yeah, and um, less points using, of uh, articulation means better uh, stability. Exactly. Yeah. Um, make sure everything's tightened, and of course, shoot at 4K or yeah. shoot at 1440 by uh, 1080. Oh, so you can crop out your feet if you exactly. so do get some feet. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's about that's it. Some folks. of the tips on using this 
Uh, three printed adapter. <laughs> we only got to use it for like I don't know a half hour, and it started raining. So we had to <laughs> we right. had to bail from the from the park, and uh, we're, we'll hopefully try to get out there uh, on some time off and, and do some more test footage. So I really like this was a fun project. It's always fun to do it outside. Um, but I think that's about it, folks. Um, let us know if you have any questions on it. Um, it's a really simple print. It takes about two hours to 3D print. Mm -hmm. It costs like a dollar in material. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, you can either dual print it, so you can have the... You did do uh, some dual printing, right? So you can have the NinjaFlex part already attached to it, or you can simply just super glue the piece on. Okay, and so there you are, look zooming like. around. Super awesome way to get some action footage without mm -hmm. having to hold another camera. Yeah. You can be Very drinking cool. uh, your Mountain Dew and being <laughs> on the cell phone. Be doing the Dew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, cool. All right, Again, next up in Shop Talk. Okay. Got. We have some new filament. Right, courtesy to the folks over at Protopasta, we are testing out the aromatic pine wood filament. Mm -hmm. So I did a couple of test prints. This is just a quick time lapse of it. This is about two hours of printing or one and a half, something like that. Yeah. Um, this was printed on the FlashForge Creator Pro, and it's basically PLA mixed with little fibers of pine. So let's take a look at the overhead and take a look at these prints in better detail. Now, so we can check out the overhang that we have on this print here, especially over the eyes, the nose, and the mouth and teeth. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the camera wants to cooperate here. Probably not. Give a second. I can always zoom in too, or do a. Oh wow! Look at that. Wonderful. That's so what cool. I like about this is that. It just, it just works with normal PLA settings. You don't need a heated bed. Of course, if you do have a heated bed, use it so that it gets most minimal. But there was very, very minor, no warping, no warping this, at all. Um, and I really like the look of it. Unlike other wood filaments, this has this nice sort of speckly, sparse look to the little, the little flakes of PLA. And it's actually, or not PLA, but the pine, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually kind of opaque. So that's, uh, so this is a little bit thick part. This is actually a little, these are all planters that I designed in Tinkercad and 1, 2, 3D. But this one is actually just two, two parameters. And you can see it can diffuse light a little bit nicely. So I have like a little LED tea light thing in there. And this is all, um, this is all overhanging the question mark. It's pretty deep. It's about two millimeters deep. And it's really thin, like I was saying. Um, so I think this, makes a, this, 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 this can make some pretty cool prints. Uh, very crisp and clean edges. Yeah, I like how fast we're able to print on this. Like you were saying before, yeah. it's 9150 90 across. So the same settings are applied on every one of these prints. There's just three tests right now. But I haven't printed these guys in, in like a year or so, so I figured I'd do it again. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did use this guy on cork fill, but uh, again, I really like this look because you get this sort of variant color look, and it, and it looks like wood. You know, I like it. Of course, we have yet to do some finishing techniques, but I don't think it kind of needs it. These are all completely unfinished, no cleanup. And that's pretty much it. If you want to pick some stuff up, it's from Proto Pasta. Of course, we, mm -hmm. we do carry a, their um, magnetic iron PLA and their uh, conductive filament, which we've done projects on both of. And of course, you get 10% off when you use Hovercam as a discount code. Speaking of Hovercam, if you want to get any of these tripod bits, we're, oh, that's right, yeah. We're, we're getting them in stock. The uh, <laughs> Maybe cold shoe stock. mount, the swivel mount, and of the course the little D-ring yeah. that makes all of this possible. Mm -hmm. you get it all in the shop. Go ahead and pick some up. I like um, your version too because it doesn't need any of that. It's just straight to the GoPro. Uh, we actually, we do sell the, the little GoPro mount that includes the little um, oh, really? tripod in an extra longer. That? Yeah, <gasps> it's in the shop. So you can <gasps> pick that up if you need some spare parts for any of your GoPro or camera needs. Okay. Well, that's pretty much all we have for you guys. This is Shop Talk, of course. Let's jump into Q&A. Remember, if you guys have any questions, leave them below in any of the videos, and we will gather them up for a future episode. OK, let's start off with the first question. This is from Kritz. Adafruit, please show a tutorial on how to make the controller on timecode 443. I want to make that so bad as a MIDI controller. I hope you guys respond. Of course, always responding. Um, so uh, he's referring to this project. Let's take a look at it on the overhead. This is a, uh, it's sort of a, uh, a, a different tutorial that you probably missed. It's, uh, it was really focused on uh, making these uh, NeoPixel uh, holders for these uh, clear buttons. Mm -hmm. But the file for this is actually already up on Thingiverse. So you can check that out. Um, it's using the EasyKey Bluefruit uh, module. 
and I'll link the the actual tutorial or the files down below. You're going to need kind of a kind of a big printer to do this. Something that's at least 150 by uh, 200. So if you take a look here, it's the NeoPixel Arcade buttons, and I didn't even break out the STL files. If you want the STL files, I'll go ahead and break those out for you. But you're going to need 123D Design to open this 123DX file. Um, but uh, there it is. It's a really simple project. This is another one too that we'll talk a little bit about later. But it was basically more about the getting NeoPixel, um, NeoPixel the LEDs inside. Part, yeah. yeah, the actual uh, arcade buttons. Really simple project. It's just like uh, I think three pieces: the top, the bottom, and the frame. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's. It could, of course, use an update if you guys want to remix it to put a lipo uh, power boost of some sort with a lipo charger in there. That would be really nice as, as well. Um, yeah, it's wireless. It's Bluetooth. It shows up just like a normal Bluetooth keyboard. And then you can use virtual MIDI so you can map your keys and yep. make it trigger sounds or all sorts of different things. Super cool project. So I think actually um, it. somebody remixed it as a medical device as well. Uh, oh, my God. That's right. You can definitely check that out. I think cool. they added it as a remix there. Okay. Thank you for the question, Grits. Next one is from Jeff Wins. Can I make something with analog sticks or the sliders, like on the 3DS, and more buttons so I can have a full controller instead of an NES layout? This is using the same um, Easy Key Bluefruit uh, module. It requires no programming. You just wire up uh, uh, you know, two wires to one button. And uh, let's take a look at it here. This is the project that we want to show you guys. So we have two different ones. Here's the analog joystick uh, commonly used on the PS2 controller, the PlayStation 2 controller. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second one is this bigger one. Uh, so it's what you normally see on an arcade. Yeah, it's got micro switches. It's a little bit bigger, obviously. But if you take a look at the Adafruit site, let me cue that up for you, you can see um, we have four different joysticks. So that's really cool. We have four different joysticks. So we have the big one that we were showing you. We have a two-axis joystick. We have one that Lamar designed. It's, uh, analog, uh, it's also an analog two-axis two joystick. But it has a, um, a select button, and it's, it oh, comes with the break down. Yeah. That's right. And then we have a really small one, the one you would see on the PSP, the analog thumbstick, uh, thumbstick, thumb joystick. Yeah. So we have all those for you. So be sure to check those out. You can, all of these are compatible uh, with the Easy Key Blue Fruit. Uh, module, mm -hmm. so you can make Bluetooth wireless. There go. Very cool stuff. Thank you for the question, Jeff. Next one. This one is from the Game of Knowing. Hi, Noah and Pedro. I've been working on a project with flexible filament, and I want part of the print to be less flexible, denser than the rest. Is there any slicing software that will allow me to have different infill percentages at different parts of the print? Yes, of yes. course. Our favorite selection software, which is Simplify 3D, has the ability to have to group two processes together. So right. one of them will have a lower uh, or a higher um, infill, and the second part of the print, as you print upwards, will have um, le more or less infill. You can see an example that they show here on their YouTube channel. They have a nice little tutorial there on we'll have creating and grouping processes. And you basically want to have, under the Advanced tab, you want it to say um, stop at layer 20. Okay. And from 1 to 20, it'll have 10% you know, infill. And then the next process, it will start at yeah. layer 20 with 50% you know, infill all the way up to the, however many layers there are. So in this case, it's using two different parts. One part has less material, and then the little nuts have way more infill. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's basically the same uh, thought there. But you can do it to one part, right? Exactly, yeah. You're saying? Okay. Yep, so definitely check out some Fly 3D and subscribe to their YouTube channel there. They always have a ton of very good right. um, techniques using uh, their software. Definitely can't and recommend They also have a really enough. cool troubleshooting guide, too, that you should check oh, out. Oh, man, yeah. We, we did a nice feature on it, too, uh, a couple of weeks ago. All right, thank you, Game of Knowing. Next one is from Kirby G. This is actually a comment that you guys should know about using threads. It's in Autodesk uh, Fusion 360 for threads. If you make them but not model it, that's that model check button, it'll actually resize the hole to, cor to the correct size for tapping later. I have taps for all of my sizes, and that works great then. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good one there. So um, it's kind of dynamically you resize it if you change your hole later. I guess that's why they have that by default. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Super cool technique. Thanks for the comment there. Thank you, Kirby. Always doing good stuff. This next question is from Chris Forbesberg. Nice work, Noah. It seems like the link to the design source 
is for the before version. So uh, do you have a link for the after version? This is on the Raspberry Pi enclosure. Um, you, yeah, it's. I took a look at the link that I shared in the comment, and it is up to date, but you'll want to download it because um, it doesn't let you see uh, if you're, if you're clicking like the preview, when you click the link, it shows like a little interactive preview of the model, but you actually can't um, see the hidden object. So I actually have it hidden in there. So uh, all you have to do is download the archive, and then you can see all the parts that are in there. So I have two different versions, of course, one with pegs, one with screws. Mm -hmm. And um, that's I think that's about it. So that's just one thing to look out for with uh, sharing uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 files. So there you go, Chris. Next question is from Proxy XD1. Could I have a tutorial uh, on how to set up the keys, like the start button, for example, is the X on the keyboard? Yeah, so this is what's really cool about uh, the Easy Key uh, module. Let's take a look at the Adafruit Learning System. Every board, every module that, that Adafruit offers has a very comprehensive tutorial. So if you take a look down here on remapping the wires, or <laughs> remapping the buttons, wirelessly, it actually, uh, uh, somebody from the community developed a nice processing sketch that has a graphical user interface that lets you get a visual of the keys, uh, of the easy key module, and then you can just click on the pin and then select what kind of uh, key commands. So you can do mouse buttons, you can do a series of commands, so you can do macros, um, function keys, and, and even media keys like volume, pause and play, like the things that are common for mm -hmm. all uh, the things. So it's really cool. You can also save the map, load the map to see if you've. I've used that a so lot. What like, is actually because I, I always to. forget like what are these keys? It's like I have to like connect it and click mm -hmm. the buttons to find out what they are. But yeah, it's very robust. Check it out. Um, again, it's you can do it. You can remap the buttons wirelessly. That's awesome. So there's always, the tutorial though. Always check out learn.adafruit.com for. Oh yeah. We have we have them always guides. listed as prerequisite guides. So it's always like, hey, you might want to check out this full tutorial before doing the tutorials, just to learn about more about the board. Exactly. So, yeah. Again, yeah. this is uh, one of the things that separates, you know, the overseas oh, we got vendors the learning guides. Yeah. from you get the boards that we make. Tutorials and documentation. That's what you're paying for. Yeah. That's what you're paying for. Thank you, Peter. And thank you for the question, Proxy XD1. Next question is from Bryce Baker. This is the last question of the year, Pedro. Does anyone know where to find games for free or cheap on the computer that are compatible with this? Anything's going to work with it. Um, the, the Mac App Store has a bunch of free games. Google Play Store has a bunch of free games. Yeah. Uh, where, where are some other places like the CNET? The, the freemium model is still alive and well, so definitely yeah. check out those two yeah. prominent stores. I think there's a lot of like HTML5 games out there. And oh, stuff. God, yeah. So yeah, just yeah, search is. around on Google. Um, yeah. Um, the game I'm playing specifically in this one is actually a free version of, of uh, Super Mega Worm. A lot of people are always asking, like, what game is that? What game? <laughs> I guess it's they so don't fun. know. <laughs> yeah, Super Game Worm, or Super, Super Worm. Super Mega Worm. That's it. My favorite game. It's so fun. So that's, that's pretty much it for this year, folks. Um, uh, thank you all for watching. Oh, wait. The, what is it, 50, 49 episodes? We have one thing left, our most favorite one. Community makes... There you go. But that was it for the questions. Thank you again for the question. Pedro, tell them how can they ask the questions. Leave any questions on any of the videos, and we'll gather them up for a future show. That's right. OK. Let's do Community Makes. This week, we got a couple of cool things. Let's cue that up. Uh, a couple of folks are still making the Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi case, the Zero, mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi Zero enclosure that I put together. Shout out to you folks. This is from Dirty Earth. Uh, put it together. It looks like he used the screw version. We got Red Eye Steve who made it in blue. Uh, PS uh, fails. Is that right? Mm -hmm. PS PS fails. Uh, printed it, and even um, Carmelito A printed out in different colors. He said they all fit just fine. Perfect. Um, so he doesn't know which one he wants to choose. Uh, some folks are, are are saying that of course it's a little bit too tight. They're not sure if they're going to be able to get the pie out. Um, so it, it really comes down to like your printer, your slice settings. How many I made shells it as close as yeah. How many shells you're using? I really made it as close as you can, but of course, the f design is is free and out there. And I would encourage you guys to check out all the other ones. I really want to check out that swivel one that somebody That's made. That's cool. a really cool one. And there's a bunch of them that are coming out, so be, feel free to make different ones and remix the one um, and post to make if you make it. Right. So that's that's that right there. Pedro, you on your Instagram, you asked people 
Um, hey, uh, anybody working on anything, anybody cool, anything cool? Send me a link and I'll post it up. So um, we start producing this, this show like on Monday and actually shoot it on a Tuesday. That's right. So anytime you guys uh, want to finish something up, try to send it over to me by Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, you probably see I do a lot of the blog posting. So send me something on either Instagram or Twitter. Tweet at me the link and make sure it's like a post where I can just easily copy and paste it in there. I don't okay. want to have to write a whole story on it. Okay. So definitely just send me a link. The more detail, I'll... the better. Exactly, yeah. This is from Geoff Cole on Instagram. It looks like he's making a very awesome uh, speaker setup. Can you tell me a little bit about details? It's like a school project? Yeah, so it's a university finals project. It looks like uh, in the description there, he's saying that he's using carbon fiber from Protopasta. And oh, nice. from ColorFab, he's using, I think, the bronze or copper um, filament there. So he's going to do some like finishing stacking. techniques. And you can see it's a very cool uh, speaker uh, setup there. Very nice. Very like the, the first image right now. Oh, this one? Yeah, the one with the oh, feet. Oh, look the way at that. It's so it's dual extruded? Dual extruded, yeah. This looks so clean. Looks Freaking awesome. He also has a tumbler, 200 plus Celsius. <laughs> it's a printing joke. Looking. So it's his whole log. Yeah. shields as well. Ooh, and to me, because, go. you know, um, Gavin is constantly playing minions. It kind of looks like a minion to me. Like minion to, <laughs> to me, it looks like BB-8 or some sort of droid. But, but that's a cool. really cool speaker enclosure. Definitely send us over a video of it tests. in action once you complete it. Yeah. All right, we'll have this link below as well so you guys can check him out and follow him on Instagram. He looks to be offering lots of different details, a lot of detail. The more detail, the better, guys. It's offering your tips and, and your fails and what you've learned is, is very, very valuable in the community, and we love seeing that. We'll continue to do that as well. Super cool. Shout out to you, uh, Geoff. Good luck in your school in your, in your school finals. Thank you, Pedro. So that's going to be it for this week folks and this year again we want to let you guys know we got the coupon code for you that's right the show is sponsored stuff. by you guys the customers out there we don't take any vc <laughs> no venture capital bank loans we're all supported by funds from all folks. of the, um, the lovely people yeah, you lovely course. people thank you guys so much for watching um we love doing this show, and we're very fortunate to be able to do it. But uh, it's all because of you guys, so thank you so much for watching. Yeah, we Give got us a, a thumbs up. Share this stuff uh, yeah, definitely share with your this. social channels. Put it up on, uh, on your Reddits. <laughs> Get those Reddit coins. And I think that's it. We're going to leave you guys off with, of course, what we do at every end of the show. Links, learn.edifu.com. Again, step Such by a step, great we resource. take a lot of effort to do all those photos, all those little nitty gritty mm -hmm. step by step writing all of all the of instructions the yeah that is stuff the main weekly. the main weekly qualification stuff. for getting this job is being able to document everything you do mm -hmm. <laughs> you heard it and of course google plus a lot of stories get shared there stuff from the community uh every three thursday we have blog posts so we have um, on the hour good collection of stuff blog posts every hour every hour and then myself pedro we're on the twitters and instagrams so uh we're, follow we're, us if you want to see mm -hmm. some behind the scenes of course i have all these little Little tiki guys I printed on my Instagram. Also, of course, starting the whole lineup of shows, it's not just 3D Thursday. It starts off with Wearable Wednesday with Becky Stern, so be sure to tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Of course, uh, last week was her, or yesterday was her show, and then next week, I think all of us are taking the time off to, to regenerate so. and uh, come up with some new, <laughs> new stuff. Uh, but always a great time with Becky. Sometimes Colin is there, Jess is there, sometimes PT is there. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. And then later in that evening, it's show and tell. This is your opportunity to come on the show, talk with Lamar and Phil, let them know what you're working on, what you're planning on working on, retro gear, all that quote, sort of good stuff. Uh, maker spaces too. You can show off your maker space and things. It's always fun. Everyone's there. Stop every, by, say hi. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, of course. And then shortly after that, it is a full hour of Lamar and Phil on Ask an Engineer. Uh, open source, Raspberry, Arduino, new products. Sometimes some top sure. secret things that Adafruit as a whole is working on, so definitely don't want to miss that. OK. OK. Uh, I don't have a slide for uh, from the desk of Lady Ada, but live from New York, it's always from the desk of Lady Ada every other Late night with Lady Ada, as you recall it. Yeah, definitely don't forget to get the YouTube gaming app so you can get notified. Five different streams. follow on Periscope if you want to get a different camera angle, 
They're on Meerkat, That's Twitch. Right. <laughs> Meerkat, Twitch, Periscope, Livestream, it, YouTube, it, too many. If it's a broadcast, uh, social media, they're thing. there. They're there. <laughs> okay, check it out. Well, again, uh, let's run last thing. Of course, hover, hover cam is the coupon code. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next year. Got a lot of cool projects coming out 2016. A lot and of cool materials, so, printers. Yes. As always. Keep on making, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next year. See you. Bye.